Oh man, you wouldn't believe the horror that's been my life these past few weeks. Like, seriously, it's been bonkers. I'm sitting here, hearing sirens wailing in the distance, and I know, dude, they're coming for me. The cops, they'll be busting through that door any minute now. But before they do, I gotta get this off my chest, you know. I need to leave something behind, a record of this crazy ride, so maybe, just maybe, someone will get that I haven't completely lost my marbles. So here goes nothing. I'm Chris, just a regular dude, 38, working a decent job as a contractor, married for the second time, or, well, I was. It's weird talking about my life like it's over, man. My first wife, she ditched me for some young hotshot, she met on a beach somewhere, knocked me flat on my ass, sent me spiraling down into a whiskey bottle for months. I was a mess, thinking that was the lowest I could go. Boy, was I wrong. The banging on the door is getting louder now, but I'm getting sidetracked. Let's rewind to the start of this twisted tale. Every fall, I'd take the fam to the mountains. My little girl, she loved it. The reds, the yellows, the oranges of the leaves. She'd say, let's just stay here, daddy. Just the two of us, forever and ever. Memories, man, they hit you at the weirdest times. But I'm rambling. On our way back from the trip, that's when I noticed my wife getting all snappy. Our daughter's humming in the back, and suddenly my wife's like, shut your trap, or I'm kicking you out of this car. I mean, my wife, she's the sweet type, never swears, and here she is, dropping F-bombs like a sailor. I'm like, babe, what the hell? And she's just like, drive the damn car, Chris. The whole ride home was dead quiet. I didn't know what to say. My brain's trying to make sense of it all. I'm thinking, maybe it's the stress. You know. Blended families, they have their moments. We get home, and they both storm off to their rooms, slamming doors. I'm left there, feeling like a lone dude in a sea of estrogen, grabbing my secret stash of bourbon from the fridge. That first swig always hits you hard, but it smooths out after a while warms you up. As I'm knocking back a few, I'm thinking about this cave we found in the woods. Dark, damp, full of weird-ass mushrooms. And then it hits me, the mushrooms. My wife, she slipped and got a face full of those things. Must be been some freaky toxin messing with her head. The sun's down, I've had a few, and I figure it's time to face the music with my girls. I go to my daughter first, find her curled up on the floor, all upset. I'm like, hey, it's okay. Pumpkin, mom just hit her head, she didn't mean it. I'm not the best with feelings, but I managed to calm her down. Then I head to my room, trying to play the cool husband, popping a gum to hide the booze on my breath. My wife's there, looking all apologetic, and we make up, or so I thought. Our moments ruin when my daughter walks in with tea, thinking I'm drunk. My wife loses it, and I end up crashing on the couch. Things just spiral from there. Every time I bring up the drinking, my wife brushes it off like it's no big deal. I'm on edge, man. Work's my only escape, but even there, I'm distracted, and the guys are starting to notice. I let slip a bit to the old timers at work, but it doesn't help. Just adds to the stress. I'm a private guy, see? Not many know I'm married, let alone have a daughter. But then they start asking weird questions, like who's Lilith? They think I'm cheating because of how I've been acting and it's messing with my head. I can't even find a recent picture of us together. It's like I'm losing it. I come home one day to find a note from my daughter, and a man's sock by the stairs. My wife's all defensive, saying she's not trying to push our daughter out. That's when I lose it and slap her. What I see in her eyes then, it's like a veil's been lifted, and there's just this raw, boiling rage. I'm drowning in booze and pills, trying to numb it all. My daughter's drawing pictures of us in the woods, and I'm thinking, wasn't I happier with both of them? But everything's a blur. I call my old friend Casey for help, and she's all about the supernatural stuff. I spill my guts to her, and she's dead silent. Then she starts asking me to remember things I can't, like my first memory of my wife and daughter. Casey rushes back to help, but my wife kills the call. She's accusing me of cheating now, and it's a mess. I find a note from my daughter talking about mean men coming over, when we fight, that's when I know something seriously wrong, I stay at work, trying to clear my head, but case in trouble, and I rush home to find two strange cars in my driveway, I'm blinded by rage, man, I grab a hammer from my truck, and sneak up to the bedroom, 
ready to catch my wife in the act. But nothing could have prepared me for what I saw. It was a bloodbath, a nightmare. My wife, my beautiful June, she's there with two guys, and it's all wrong. I snap, and I can't stop myself. The hammer's swinging, and there's blood everywhere. I look over, and there's Casey, dead in the closet, stabbed to death. She's holding this article about leeches, these creatures that mess with your head, make you see things that ain't there. It says booze helps you see through their tricks. And there's this note, begging me to remember. Ruth was sterile. June didn't exist. But that can't be right. I have a daughter, don't I? The sirens are close now. I've got a gun to my head. But then I hear my daughter's voice. She's downstairs, setting the table, talking about moving to the mountains. I don't say a word. I just kick her into the oven, chain it shut, and crank it up. She's tough, still banging on the door but I think it's over now. The cops are breaking in, and I'm sitting here, trying to make sense of it all. I've got the gun, the hammer, and not much time. I think I'm ready now. The oven's quiet. Maybe, just maybe, everything's gonna be okay. The rest of the document is a police report detailing the tragic events at the home of Christopher and June, with authorities concluding a horrific scene of violence and delusion. Lilith, the daughter, was rescued and adopted by a kind officer, but the family has since gone missing. If you have any information, please call 